Hello guys, welcome back to this channel and thanks for viewing this video. Today we are going to talk about radio buttons, how to create a radio button and add it on a frame. And we are also going to create a very simple Java GUI system. It's going to be a quiz system made up of radio buttons. All right. So in Java, if you want to create a radio button, you use a specific class called J radio button. So here is how my project is structured. I have two classes test app, which is the main class. And in that main class, I have a main method. And this line of code here is being used for creating a frame object. And then the second class, I have the my frame class, uh, which is inheriting from the J frame. And I have the constructor here in the constructor. I am defining the various attributes of my frame. So let's create an instance of a J radio button class. So I will use J radio button. So that's the class you need to use and I will call it radio button. So outside of the constructor, we will declare that instance. So we will need to import the J radio button class to our project. And now in a constructor, that's where we will instantiate our radio button. So I'm going to say radio button equal new J radio button. All right. I can set the text of this radio button and I will say true like this. So now if you want to add the radio button to the frame, you say this, that add radio button it needs to be radio button. So I need to add another property here that will allow me to actually manually add the alignment and the dimensions of the radio button. So I'll say radio button that set bound 300, 200, 350. So let me run. So now you can see I'm having a radio button showing on the frame. Okay. So what we can do is to add another radio button. We will say radio button two. And then simply copy this, paste it here and say two, two, two fifty for the Y axis and then say false like this. We need to add the second radio button to the frame. So this that add radio button to run. There you have true false. So here you can see you are being able to click on both these radio buttons. Okay, you can click on the radio button true and then radio button false at the same time. So what if we want to make sure that if we click on one particular radio button, all the other radio buttons need to be deselected. Okay, so we need to do something about it. Just to show you what I mean, I will add third radio button and that will say radio button three, radio button three here. I need to add radio button three. Okay, so now here I'll say 300 and I will say maybe just like this. When I run, it's not shown because I need to add so this that add radio button three semicolon. Now run, there we have our three radio buttons. And you can see when I click on the three of them, they are being selected at the same time. So I wanna make sure that if I, let's say, click on true here. And then if I come and click on false, the true must be deselect. If I click on maybe, you know, all the two buttons here must be deselected. So how do you do that? So in order to do that, we will say we need to create a button group. So that will be button group. I'll call it BG new button import the button group. So we are going to create a button group and then add our radio buttons to this particular button group so that all the radio buttons are going to be considered as a single group of buttons. So I'll say BG that add, and then I'll say radio button. So that was for the first one. I'll copy radio button two. So I've had in radio, but the first radio button and then the second radio button. Now, if I come here and run, if I click on true, and then when I click on false, you see that the first radio button is deselected automatically. But if I click on maybe you see, because I have not added the third radio button to my button group. So I need to do that here. And I will simply say radio button three here. I may also maybe just add fourth radio button. So I will call it radio button four. Let me just fix the alignment, come up here, add radio button four, and then I'll add it to the frame. Okay, let me set the text, I'll say not sure. And let me add this radio button four to my button group. So radio button four. 
let's run our program now if i click on true you can see if i click on false it's deselected automatically if i click on maybe here it's deselected automatically okay so only one button can be selected at a time you can't have two buttons selected at the same time so all this is because we have our button group here and we have added all the radio buttons to the button group so now let's take another example where we are going to be using the action listener with our radio button so we are going to add some components the first one will be a label so we'll say j label label and then title let's import j label and then we will add j button btn all right so let's instantiate the label let's say we will instantiate the title first so we we'll say new title j label and we can say exam quiz or i will simply say multiple choice question semicolon so i'll set the bounds i'll say title here this i'll say 100 i need to come and add this particular title to the frame and say add title now if you run yeah you can see title shown here all right so i can add some more properties so i'll say title set font new font so i'll say arial font not bold 28 as the font size say title that set background so that will be colored at blue import the color class title that set foreground color that white if you run so let's increase the size of our title and uh, for the background color to pick we will set opaque it's title that set opaque true and then run so that's it we can add some space or some padding. So I would say set border, new empty border, 0, 10, 0, 0. And import empty border. So now when you run, this is how it's looking like. Increase that. All right, so this is the title of our multiple choice question system so we can work on the label so instead of calling it label i will call it question because so this one is actually going to be a question all right so i'll say i'll simply copy and paste this paste that i don't need background and the opaque i don't need this as well i need to reduce the font size let's say 18 let's say 100 for y-axis and in here, I'm going to say question. Who, I need to write a question here. So I'll say, who is the inventor of the World Wide Web? All right. So now that's this is go going to be the question. And let me run and see. Okay. Yeah, I need to change this to question, 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 and then question. Now, when you run, it's still not showing because I need to add the question to the frame. So I'll say this that add question and then run. Yeah, so I'll so we'll say for here, 500 for the width, 124 X axis. All right, so 180 here and then run. All right, so this, um, I will try to fix this X axis. 310 now let me increase to three, 320 all right so the next thing i need to add will be the button so after the question i will say btn that uh i need to instantiate that so new j button i will set the text of the button to check your answer so now i can actually add some properties or attributes to my button. So I'll say BTN everywhere here and I'll set the bound. Wait, now this is it. Let me change this to BTN and come down. What uh, I need to do, I'm gonna add the button. So this that add BTN. So this will add the button to the frame and let me run. Yeah, so you can see my button. Let me fine tune the button a little bit. So 200 for the width, maybe 250, if that's okay. Yes, I guess. 250 here as well. All right. And 400, maybe 420. So now for all the radio buttons, I will say radio 
button that set focusable false. So simply copy and paste. So here will be radio button two, radio button three, radio button four. Let me set the background color for the button. So BTN that set background color that red, and then BTN that set foreground color that white. So now when you run, that's how it is looking like. We can also add a set focusable to this button. So btn that set focusable false and run. All right. So we have our title. We have the question. We have the various um, multiple choice of answers, and then we have the button. So what we want to do is that based on this question, who is the inventor of the World Wide Web? We have choice answer choices. If the user clicks on either one of these, and then if you want to check whether he answered correctly or not, he simply has to click on a button, check your answer here. And we want to have a pop-up dialog box to say whether his choice was correct or not. All right. So let us first of all work on the answer choices. So here I will say, who is the inventor of the World Wide Web? The first, I'll say Logan Murphy. The second choice, I can say William MacArthur. Third one, I will say Tim Berners-Lee. And the fourth one, I will say Elon Musk. All right, so I'll have these four choices. You know what I'm going to do? I will maybe try to work on the size of my answer choices. So I will add this line of code to set font. So I will say radio button, say 14. Let me see what will happen. Yeah, that's it. So what if I say 18, all right? So I will do the same thing for the remaining radio buttons. So radio button two, radio button three, radio button four. Now when you run, yeah, this is how it's looking like. All right, so I'll fix this. 300 for the X axis, run. Yeah, this looks better. So now let's apply the action listeners. So what we want to do is that if the user selects, you know, the first answer choice and then want to check his answer to know if it is correct or not, you can click on the button here and then a pop-up will appear saying it's correct or it's incorrect, you know, something like that. So we need to use the action listener in order to be able to do that. All right. So let's come up here. We will say implement action listener, import the action listener event class, add an implemented method, and then we will add the action listener to our button that we call BTN. Where is that? So it's here. So we simply say BTN that add action listener this. So our button would listen to the action event. And let's come down here to our action performed, change the action event instance name here to EVT. And then now we are going to start writing some code. So the first, um, so we will write if statement. So what we will say here is radio button, if radio button that is selected, so this line of code is going to check to see if the first radio button is has been selected by the user. If it is selected by the user, we will tell our program to output a dialog box with a certain message when the user clicks on check your answer. Okay? So we will say j option pane that show message dialog this that's a parent component your answer is incorrect so i need to write that here i need to import j option pane so let's check this when i run i select the first radio button as the answer to this question and then when i click on check your answer you see your answer is incorrect all right so that's it i would do the same thing for the other radio buttons so if radio button two and i can say incorrect all right so let's check you see your answer is incorrect or you can say we can add an int a string variable here that we'll call msj and we will initialize it to null and we will say if you select radio button the first radio button then msj we will update it by concatenating um, by saying msj you selected the first answer choice. Think back to the line, MSJ, but 
your answer is incorrect. We see break line here, then MSJ plus a please try again, semicolon, and then we will simply pass MSG here. Now when you run, if I select the first answer, see you selected the first answer choice, but your answer is incorrect. Please try again. All right, so I will do for the other buttons. So for this one, I will say you selected the second answer choice, but your answer is incorrect. Let me copy. Radio button three is actually the right answer because Tim Berners-Lee is actually the founder or the inventor of the World Wide Web. So here I will say, congratulations, you selected the correct answer. And remove the third line here like this. I'm going to add another if statement for radio button four. And I will say you selected the fourth answer choice. So now you can see if I click Logan Murphy says you select first answer choice, but your answer is incorrect. Please try again. Second, please try again. Third, you see, congratulations. You selected the correct answer. And then second one is also the wrong answer. So and add some more break lines here. Copy, paste, copy and paste. And finally here. Now you can see the output dialog box. So guys, that was it on how to create J radio buttons. And we also created a small multiple choice question quiz system here. And then we added the action listener on this particular button that is checking whether the answer given by the user is correct or not. So I hope this video was informative and please don't forget to like, to share and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos like this one. Let's meet in the next one.